and welcome to TCF Online. Today, Mark Winterburn and I are going to take you through this presentation, Leveraging Technology to Respond to COVID-19 and Beyond. In this presentation, we want to provide some context around COVID-19, convey that we fully grasp the gravity of the situation and the profound impact it is having on our banking clients and indeed in society as a whole, and how, as a soft software package provider, we can tangibly help. We will cover four areas, the impact of COVID-19 on banks and the challenges it faces, demonstrate the importance of technology in responding to this crisis, highlight how the responses to the crisis are well aligned with the capabilities that banks need to build for the longer term in any case, that COVID-19 fast tracks some of these capabilities. Finally, Mark Winterburn will showcase how Temenos is uniquely positioned to help. We cover three aspects there our resilience as an organization, how our software helps banks to build the capabilities required to respond to the crisis and beyond, and finally, how our software can be remotely deployed and delivered even in this environment. So now we will cover COVID-19 and its impact on banks. It is important to remember that banking in, as an industry faced significant challenges pre-COVID, that it had already been undergoing fundamental transformation driven by disruptive technologies which are leading to digital and open banking and the disintermediation of the banking value chain. Moreover, returns and growth had been slowing. The stock market unsurprisingly expects COVID-19 to exacerbate the impact on banks' earnings. We observe that technology-intensive stocks are expected to weather the storm better than the market. This leads us to believe that technology is being valued in this crisis. What makes COVID-19 so different is the sheer scale and scope. It affects more than 200 countries across the world, although at a different pace. And banks in every region are having to deal with remarkably similar issues, irrespective of the peculiarities of their particular markets. McKinsey suggested just a few weeks ago, two possible scenarios but things have been moving so fast that it is rapidly becoming clear that scenario two is the more likely one. We are talking about a 12 to 18 month horizon at best. The overriding issue humanity faces is that the solution to this crisis is a vaccine. Assuming that a vaccine is created at lightning speed, it is safely only possible to be administered after six to nine months of human trials when it will need to be deployed to two thirds of the world's population. That is a logistical exercise of epic proportions. And until then, the way to manage this crisis and to ease the lockdowns and return to e economic activity is a combination of contact tracing and testing and surveillance. Assuming that countries are able to succeed in this, which is we are hopeful of that, given that Germany, Austria, Norway, Denmark and South Korea are beginning to do this. We are still a long way from international business and international travel resuming. So we assume that there will be a worldwide recession. In the financial crisis, GDP fell by 6.75%. And in this crisis, economists are expecting a much, much bigger fall. For banks, this means a certain cataclysmic drop in earnings, huge regulatory and indeed public scrutiny. Capital, fortunately, is not an immediate problem, but could become so if the crisis prolongs. That's because pre-crisis capital buffers were adequate and governments are seeking banks as part of the solution and providing relief from provisions. Now, if we consider the bigger picture, beyond this crisis, the world's leading thinkers have been predicting such events for years. Ian Golden, the professor of globalization at the Oxford Martin School in Oxford University, mentioned in his 2014 book, The Butterfly Defect, that the hyperconnectivity of our world makes it increasingly likely that five global events could happen. Pandemics of this kind, another financial crisis, cyber attacks, antibiotic resistance, and climate change. What this means for banks is that increasing uncertainty in the environment around them underlines the need for organizational agility and resilience. The immediate changes observed in consumer behavior are increased reliance on digital engagement for obvious reasons, like the inability to visit branches in lockdown conditions and the bulk of shopping moving online. In parallel with small businesses closing and economic activity grinding to a halt, 
There is a spike in unemployment and consequent financial distress for consumers, SMEs, and corporates alike. Behavioral scientists who have analyzed previous crises caution that many of these mindsets and behaviors will outlast the COVID-19 crisis. So we can assume that the increased emphasis on digital banking and engagement is likely to continue well beyond COVID-19. Banks need to respond in the following three ways. First, business continuity. Just carrying on day-to-day -day business operations, given the disruption to our established way of life, is the very first challenge. It is a non-trivial problem in certain developing countries with weak technology infrastructures. The second is about engaging with customers, servicing clients' changing needs digitally and sensitively. The final point is about socioeconomic back pressures. Banks need to manage the financial impact on their business while balancing the needs of society. In the COVID-19 crisis, there is renewed focus on corporate social responsibility. Banks are spending powerful signaling about the positive role they play in society and their commitment to their customers and employees. They are helping clients with struggling with their finances. Many bank CEOs have publicly announced pay and bonus cuts, so jobs are safeguarded. Let us consider business continuity. The first thing banks needed to ensure is continuity of business operations, given the shutting down of branches and offices and the necessary shift to remote working. From a technology point of view, apart from enabling employees to work using mobile technologies, it also means that mission critical systems must be designed for secure remote access and cloud technologies come into play in a big way. Staff shortages and fluctuations due to the illness mean more flexibility in managing the workforce, retraining, and possibly assigning and moving to new roles. Due to the rise in digital interactions and transactions, there is greater potential for fraud and cyber attacks, and banks need to be ready for this. Governments are going to require more transparency and reporting during this crisis, and they will also mandate that banks work on spe specific initiatives with them. Finally, financial market volatility places additional burden on the bank's function, treasury function and underscores the need for real-time decision support from treasury systems. Now let us look at customer engagement. Customer traffic in branches will spill over to the call centers and digital channels for obvious reasons. COVID-19 has also created serious financial distress and anxiety for society, so calls to assisted channels have skyrocketed. Hence, banks need to beef up their digital capabilities to handle many more interactions and transactions in terms of scalability. They need to extend their omni-channel capability so that their relationship managers and call centers can seamlessly engage. They need to ensure even complex customer journeys can be handled completely digitally. And finally, they need to move products and services that currently are only offered in branches to a digital channel play. And banks may need to help non-digital customers, say the elderly, to rapidly adopt digital banking. One Chinese bank set up a COVID-specific online portal that informs customers about their products and services and provides video servicing capabilities and online tutorials. Finally, a spike in contactless payments due to perceived safety reasons means banks have had to raise limits and deal with the increased volumes. Now we move to socioeconomic pressures. The massive increase in financially vulnerable customers means banks need to make concessions on existing loan terms and conditions, rapidly launch crisis-specific products, partner with third parties to provide products that they may not do so themselves, for instance, loans from third parties that do not meet the bank's own credit scoring criteria, where open banking comes into play. They may also decide to provide non-banking services such as booking doctor's appointments, or helping local charities like certain banks in China have done. They need to be proactive also in identifying customers with financial needs based on their current financial profile, but also on their proximity to the pandemic hotspots. A bank in Singapore has, for instance, provide, provided SME-specific services such as property loan deferments, temporary bridging loans, fee rebates, and next-day collateral-free business loans. Another bank in China launched a new corporate loan with a simple app 
fast approval, flexible payment terms, and near instant fulfillment. Many government programs are being intermediated by banks. COVID-19 has also led to a spike in scams. In the UK alone, 500 scams have been observed since the start of the crisis. People extorting money, pretending to be charities. So banks have to be extra vigilant. We now come to a case example. We spoke with a European tier one bank that has set up a new digital challenger bank under a different brand. There was a stark contrast in the ability to react to the crisis between the digital challenger and the parent bank. The digital challenger was able to send a clear communication to all its customer base instantly, while the parent bank was hampered by its complex approvals process and lack of a single source of customer data. The challenger used its modern AI-based technology to respond to customer queries rapidly and efficiently, while the call centers at the parent bank were overwhelmed. Also, the parent bank was described as being in chaos when it came to its own operations, when staff had to suddenly work from home, while the challenger, of course, had no such issues. The technology capabilities required for COVID-19 are perfectly in line with the banking capability model required for banks to compete in today's era of digital and open banking. The capabilities marked here in blue are the ones that will be fast-tracked by COVID-19. Increased focus on digital engagement, end-to-end -end digitization, the use of customer as well as fraud analytics, resilience and scalability of the technology infrastructure. Hello everyone, my name is Mark Winterburn and I run the product and technology group for Temenos. Let me add my welcome to TCF Online 2020 to you all. I want to start by thanking Kanika for laying out so clearly the impact and challenges of the COVID-19 virus, especially to the banking industry. At Temenos, we believe we have the right solutions and the right implementation methodologies to help the industry meet these challenges. Before we get into that, let me just take a moment to explain how we adapted to the COVID-19 pandemic. We implemented a switch to remote working and it happened very quickly. And within a few days, we had almost 100% of our staff uh, working from home. Product development has continued to deliver our extensive R&D portfolio. And so far we've had no impact to deliver it and support have continued to meet all of their operational SLAs. We have plans in place to safely return to our offices as each jurisdiction allows. In addition, we have uh, created a number of specific COVID-19 uh, products, and I'll turn to those shortly. We've also made the online learning platform with over 400 courses available free to all our clients. I'm now going to build upon three slides that Kanika introduced in her pitch, but I'm going to add to them the Temenos response to each of the challenges that she laid out. Let me start with business continuity. The key competency required here to tackle these challenges is flexibility. For example, our software is available on premise, public or private cloud, or it can be consumed as one or more SaaS services. The software stack is highly configurable. And by that, I mean by parameterization, not by adding new code. Regardless of the implementation choice, it remains highly performant, massively scalable, highly secure, real-time software. And let's not forget it's digital front to back, be that infinity, transact, etc. If we turn to customer engagement, we've been saying for a number of years that the banking industry can only truly compete and win in the post-financial crisis environment if it adopts a truly digital customer orientated architecture. Indeed, at this TCF event six years ago, the whole premise was succeeding through the digital revolution. COVID-19 reinforces the need for banks to deploy an omni-channel, real-time, API-driven software stack to truly understand and serve their customers. In addition, they need embedded predictive analytics and sophisticated AI capabilities. This is the Temenos offer, be it via targeted marketing campaigns, intuitive self-service, AI-driven conversational banking, etc. If we turn to the final slide of challenges Kanika raised, the socio-economic. Throughout the pandemic, governments around the world have changed the financial support available 
both to individuals and to specific business segments on a pretty frequent basis. And to cope, financial institutions need to be very agile. We only have to think about deploying the US Paycheck Protection Scheme. Using our product designer, banks can customize or create brand new products the same day. Combine that with our embedded predictive analytics, our XAI platform, and our API approach, an API first approach, banks can deliver with unparalleled agility. We took this approach ourselves to create COVID-19 specific products, which is what I want to talk about now. All the following products are available via SaaS, by the way. Infinity Engage allows customers to review the available advisors and choose one they think will best serve them, and then they interact with them via their mobile phone. Whilst cool in its own right, it's very helpful for people who are used to branch banking, particularly in countries where for a period of time the branches are closed. Urgent Relief Loan. New, XA, new XAI models help banks identify retail customers who are at financial risk and offer them viable, personalized products in real time. Another one to pull out is the SME Smart Decisioning, again using new XAI models. This helps banks assist small businesses with fast loan approval, viable financial products. During that, they can dynamically onboard them, conduct eligibility tests, process their loan applications, establish pricing, whatever. Taminos Continuous Deployment Fast Track is a means by which we help banks accelerate change into both test and live environments. And we can provide remote, automated, secure DevOps tooling to enable that. And as, as I mentioned earlier, we have made available our uh, Temenos Learning online free to all our customers. In the next slide, I want to show that despite the issues raised by COVID-19, we continue to invest right across our product set. Obviously, I can't go through all of the items here now, but I can highlight a few, and they're all covered in detail in the various virtual rooms. Starting with Infinity, I mentioned Engage earlier, but there's a whole lot uh, more going on uh, in the Infinity investment portfolio. I just thought I'd uh, show that we are um, adding more and more AI-enhanced distribution services to add personalized use cases that allow banks to generate greater revenue. Talking about AI, I have mentioned that a lot, and you can see from the list here, we're adding more and more AI use cases right across our whole product range. I'd just pull out payments as well. Our payment solution is designed and built for a real-time payments world, and has had instant payments out of the box for a number of years, now deployable in ever more countries. And we've recently completed a benchmark that confirms our solution scales way beyond the needs of even the largest global payments banks. We continue our extensive investment in transact across all the business units, including retail, corporate and treasury. And again, I'll just pick out the work we've done on pricing, which includes a highly configurable framework of different pricing mechanisms and a standalone pricing solution that deals effectively, effectively with the leakage experienced by banks running legacy core solutions. As you would expect, we continue to invest uh, a lot in our technology solutions. Uh, we've done a lot in the last 12 months and we have ambitious plans for 2020, 2021. In technology, we've, we've achieved a lot in the past 12 months and we have ambitious plans for 20, 2021. We have continued to deliver a lot in the cloud space, working with all of the large cloud solution providers, further enhancing our cloud agnostic approach. And we recently completed our internal accreditation of the Google Anthos solution. I'll turn briefly now to uh, remote first implementations. We've been working on the tooling and the processes required for successful remote implementations for some time, refining the approach we matured for the Temenos continuous deployment solution. We're now at the point where we're running successful remote implementations in every region, and we've built the required expertise for remote implementations in every region. We can help banks get remote ready very quickly. This stands us in good stead to help banks through COVID-19. Indeed, we did more go lives in Q1 this year than we did last year, but the methodology will be far more widespread post COVID-19. And let me explain why. Remote working is a win-win for both banks and for Temenos. 
it's quicker because we don't waste time obtaining visas. We don't have to have uh, staff traveling everywhere. It's easier to find and deploy skills because we can share them. All of this tends to make these uh, the staff more productive and the implementations both quicker and cheaper. You can find more details uh, about remote implementation in the dedicated virtual room. Talking of the dedicated virtual rooms, I encourage you to visit as many as you can, enjoy the sessions, there are presentations, there are demos, and you can interact uh, with our experts from across Temenos. So please enjoy those, enjoy TCF Online 2020, and I look forward to meeting you face-to-face -face when we're able to. Good luck.